So I, I decided tonight that I wanted to speak about one of our message points. Um, and I, we're going to talk about faith without works is dead. So if you use the bathroom stalls, you've probably seen. We have a poster in there. It has 10 message points. Um, actually, last week, if you were here for Marie and Ash, Marie actually did one of them, probably without knowing. He did uh, listen to Jesus. I'm going to do uh, faith without works is dead. And who knows what will happen after that. But um, those 10 message points are really central to who we are and to who, what Father's House culture looks like. Um, we believe in the whole Bible. And these 10 message points are not exclusive, but actually they are real foundational. And, and we haven't found anything yet that doesn't fit them. So Faith Without Works is Dead is, is one of my favorites. It seems a little intimidating. For those of you that kind of know already, the reference comes from James. But actually, that's not where we're going to go, because guess what? I found it somewhere else. So yes, I know. Jesus said it too. OK. So we're going to go into Matthew uh, 13, and Jeremiah, yes, we are going to start in verse 18. I think we're just going to go for it. All right, so Jesus has already told the parable of the seeds, um, but now he's explaining it, and he basically retells it, so we're just going to read from here. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was thrown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet it has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the one, the man, who hears the word and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom seed, seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Okay, we're going to stop there for just a minute. Now, I grew up in church. I've read these verses many times, as I'm sure have many of you. And I just always assumed that I was the one who, you know, the good soil, right? And I think many of us do. And I think we assume that any of the, the negative ones, they're, out, they're the people out there, <laughs> right? And if we're here, we're definitely the ones with the good soil because we show up at church. We read our Bibles, we pray, right? But he's actually not talking about that. He's not talking about attending church, and he's not talking about reading our Bibles because there was no Bible at that time, <laughs> right? And he's not talk talking about worshiping. He's actually talking about producing fruit. And we can produce fruit when we're doing what he tells us to do, but we can also sit in these chairs for years without producing fruit. So just because we're here doesn't mean that we are the good soil. Now, that said, I was kind of anticipating that this might be a little bit of a harsh message, and I felt the Holy Spirit stop me and say to tell you, well done. We are doing well. The Father's house has fruit. And my hope in, in sharing this and, and helping us to understand it in a group is that more and more and more of us will begin to participate in the fruit that this body is producing, and we can produce more. We want to be the ones producing a hundredfold and not just 30-fold. So I want us to understand the importance of what Jesus is telling us here. Now, I want to break this down for you. So the very last verse, uh, verse 23. Jeremiah, would you put that up? Okay. So let's break down what is good soil. Because we, I think, at least have established the idea that we want to be the good soil. Right? So let's go with that. All right. And, the, and on the one whom... The one and the one on whom. There we go. <laughs> and the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, if you've heard me speak before, you know I like to break it down, so that is where we're going. Okay? So the word here, 
we think of that as ears, right? The word doesn't mean hears like it can go in one ear and out the other. It means that you get something by hearing and you learn. So when Jesus is talking to the crowds and he's talking about hearing, every single one of those four examples that Jesus gives, everybody heard, right? But not everybody understood. So you're getting something by hearing and you're learning. Now, understanding, this word means to join together in the mind. So now you're learning something and it's joining with your mind. Now, bearing fruit, that actually, that word is, is a present tense word that means that you are currently fertile. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have four. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Fertile in the kingdom, guys. All right. <laughs> okay, but... but on, on the giggly note, all right, think about that for a minute. So we all know what fertility produces, yes, children, okay. Now, is your um, understanding of Jesus and who he is and, and the kingdom and being part of the kingdom, is that producing fertility in you? Don't assume that it is, Right? Is it? Are you fertile with the kingdom? So this word bearing fruit means presently fertile and able to produce young. So it's not just a matter of being ripe, as far as fertility goes, right? But actually ready and able to produce a replica of you, or in this case, of the kingdom. All right, now bringing forth... That means to make and to author a cause, to carry it out, and to execute it. So this idea that Jesus is presenting his followers with, with as far as the good soil goes, the good soil is someone who hears it and learns. It joins together in their mind, making them fertile and able to produce young. And then they make and author a cause, which they carry out and execute. And that's where we get 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold. So there's an, there's an active nature to participating in the kingdom. So when Jesus uh, says here um, that all of these people heard the word, but not all these people were fertile in executing what they heard. So for us... Right Now, as, as a body, I believe and I, I agree, not that he needs my agreement, that we are doing well at this, right? We are bearing fruit as a body, but we need all our members active in this. And Jesus isn't asking us for something that he didn't start himself. So if we go down, um, Jeremiah, I think I'm going to get to that other slide later, but let's um, actually skip here. Holy Spirit's changing it up on me. Let's uh, go to Colossians. So God's love has action, right? So, for example, this verse, For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. So that's God the Father. There was an active nature to his love for us. There's an active nature to the kingdom where he doesn't just sit there in heaven waiting for us to realize that he's God. He actually did something to make that happen. Jesus also was active. Uh, let's, I mean, we know this, but let's just go with it. Hebrews 12, 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus, we know, of course, he came, he lived, and he died. There is an active nature to his love, to who he is. The kingdom of God is living and active. 
right? What is the, the verse came through my head today, and I didn't get a chance to check the context of it, but the kingdom of God is violent, and the violent take it by force, right? I've never quite understood what that meant, but I think that it is referring to this active nature of the kingdom that we are meant to be participating in. See, our job here on earth, once we have heard and learned, is not to sit back and enjoy our Christianity. It is to begin producing fruit. See, that hearing and understanding is supposed to create a fertility in us that is replicating the kingdom in all of the places that are around us. See, that's why James then, so let's go to James. That's why James says that faith without works is dead because what is faith? Well, faith we tend to think of as an action, and it is, um, but actually what that word faith means in the Greek is just the conviction of the truthfulness of God and his existence, that he is creator and ruler. So faith is actually just a recognition of who God is. So if, if we recognize, if we come to a knowledge or an understanding that God is who he says he is, now I have an obligation to do something with that, right? Because that's why faith without works is dead. So you can't just sit in a seat and say, yes, I believe in God, right? Otherwise, we are not the good soil, <laughs> We are maybe the, the soil that the worries of the world or the deceitfulness of wealth have taken our eyes off of the prize. Because we can fall, the seed can fall in us in a place where our eyes are off of what Jesus is asking for. He's off of the kingdom, off of what Jesus came to do here on earth. When, when we're looking and worrying and thinking about other things, we are not fertile in executing <laughs> the plan, which is for the gospel to spread through the whole earth. That's what Jesus came to begin. It was to reconcile humanity back to God through the love that caused Jesus to be active by dying on the cross. So there's, there's an, such an active nature that I think we forget. All right. Um, let's actually read this verse in James. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, and yet, do you, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. So just recognizing that God is God is not enough. The word works is an action that completes a purpose. Let me say that again. The word works is an action that completes a purpose. See, Jesus did a work when he died on the cross. The father did a work when he sent his son to die on the cross. Now we are called also to do a work and to complete a purpose that God has set for each one of us here on earth. And when we are doing that, that is when we know that we are good soil because we will be replicating, reproducing, multiplying a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. So... I suppose that brings us to the question, what exactly are we supposed to do? Well, what's in front of you? Is there someone in pain that needs to know that Jesus loves them? Does somebody need something and you have the means or the resources to give it? Does your, life sh does your light shine before men or do you keep it hidden? Are you willing to tell the truth? Are you willing? See, Jesus told the truth. He told the truth all the time. People didn't necessarily want to hear all of it, but he didn't hide who he was and what he was here to do. We are not supposed to hide who we are in him and what we're here to do. Because people need us. And, and 
I mean, I'm just sort of sitting back and, and skimming what is happening around us. And I, I genuinely don't understand why we are so blessed to be here in this bubble <laughs> in the world, but we are blessed to be here in this bubble. And we have the ability to speak to people face to face. In, there are very few places now where people are actually speaking face to face. But people are scared. People need Jesus now more than ever. And I, I mean, I am not a prophet. I am not super smart. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say absolutely hands down that this thing is God, but he will use it. He will use it to make people desperate for him. The question is, are they going to see us? And here in Orville, they're going to see us. You can, like, smile. <laughs> they're going to see us because we're out there being the light, right? We are not hiding our light here in Oroville. How blessed are you to be here in this church where, honestly, you don't, if you don't want to, you don't even have to go and do your own thing. You can just join in with all the things that are going on. Meet with Jonathan at 6 o'clock on a Thursday night. I promise you, your light's going to shine. Come to the Salmon Festival on Saturday and raise money for Avi's Place because we are going to put a two-acre park for families to travel from who the heck knows where in the U.S. to go on vacation with their kids that don't get to have vacations. We're doing that here. We're having Night at the Oscars, which is just an event. But you know what? We're going to get behind Avi's place because our light's going to shine, and you're going to take your light to work tomorrow. <laughs> and you're going to lend your neighbor a cup of sugar in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and you're going to love your kids, and you're going to tell your grandkids the truth, and you're not going to be afraid to say the hard things because you love the way that Jesus lived. Because this church is good soil. Amen? So, let's do it. And if this has been convicting at all, which I suppose as much as I'm excited to be part of this, we should always be challenged in moving forward, right? I want to continue to move forward in this. I want to continue to give more of who he's called me to be to them and to you and to us so that we can all be part of this body and we can work so effectively if we're all helping. <laughs> my family, my kids and I, the only way things get done these days is if we are all doing it together. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I'm better at keeping the car clean. We're better at having, well, maybe not the laundry done. Don't ask them. <laughs> the yard <laughs> and, and the house tidy than even when George was around because we got to do it together. And uh, there's, there is something so special about a family that works together, right? And what does that word work? An action that completes a purpose that accomplishes something. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let's pray. If anybody wants to come up for prayer or spend a few minutes with Jesus, um, you are definitely so welcome to do that. But, you know, if nothing else, I hope this encourages you to participate, to get out of your comfort zone, show up on a Thursday night. You don't know what it's going to look like, but I promise you it's going to be awesome because Jesus likes to do stuff. And so when you get up, and go do stuff, he's going to do it with you. And you're going to learn about him in a different way than you knew about him before. Because he's going to become more real. Because he likes to be around the people. Right? Amen. Okay. Don't want to start up again. <laughs> Lord, help us. Lord, we just, okay, tell you what. I'm, I'm just going to, if you want the stuff I'm talking about, pray with me. If you don't, then don't pray because it's what is classified as a dangerous prayer. And don't pray it unless you mean it. Okay? So Jesus, I want to be good soil. So get me out of my seat. 
make me uncomfortable. Help me do the things I don't want to do. <laughs> because I want to bear fruit. I want to bring forth your cause here on the earth. Amen. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.